Hello, welcome back to Lost in Thought. My name is Jen and today I'd like to talk to you about Queen Cleopatra, the Netflix documentary. And um, just before we start, I'd like to say, first of all, that uh, in this video, I'm not going to talk about the actress's skin colour because I think that has been really, really well covered by pretty much everybody and their mum. Um, there is a million videos about that and I pretty much agree that yes, the the actress, that if this is a documentary, they could have picked somebody that more accurately depicted um, what we know about Cleopatra. This is about what else is wrong with that, uh, the Cleopatra documentary, because there is a lot, lot more wrong with it. So let's get into it. First of all, I want to start up with a term called homogenizing history. And if you've never heard of that term, don't worry, it's because I have made it up. And it is literally what it sounds like. It's taking a chunk of history and uh, from a more modern day perspective, we call it the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Romans, the ancient Greeks. And we sort of bundle that period of time together as if it is one specific period, that period as if it was one thing happening all the time. And with this in particular documentary is we have these absolutely gorgeous visuals of lots of pyramids going on constantly, um, <clears throat> lovely CGI sweeping over the tops of various pyramids, lovely pyramids at sunset. And the fact is that Cleopatra had nothing to do with the pyramids at all. And in fact, the pyramids were built a few thousand years before Cleopatra was even born. Um, the sort of modern day equivalent would be as if we were doing a documentary about King Charles III and using a lovely CGI rendering of Hadrian's Wall. It seems ridiculous to us and it's pretty much the same thing. But to a lot of documentary makers, if it's something that takes part in ancient Egypt, then the pyramids have to be there. Where for Cleopatra, these pyramids are already an old thing. They don't really have anything to do with her. Yes, they, they look nice, but there should be a lot of other things that would make more sense than using these. Um, another thing that really got to me was the sort of costumes, the armour, the everything that people wore. If this was a, a television show, a fictional thing, if it was a retelling of, say, Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, then fine, whatever, it doesn't really matter, it's, it's fiction. But you, you're saying you're a documentary, please, please, why can't you just make, if you're making a documentary, the things your actors are wearing more accurate and I'm just going to take some screenshots and I'm going to go through them one by one because as somebody who really really loves history and really enjoys it it really really starts to irritate me it grates on me so let's start off with this image here I'm not entirely sure who this man is supposed to be but it's clear that his armor if you wish to call it that is completely made up um, these weird little circle things that are stitched on to his tunic and he's got that sort of Superman type cape thing attached to his shoulders. It's just fantasy. It's just made up. Some more Romans now and while some of the helmets are okay for the period, uh, some of them are wearing ones that from about 100 years in the future. Modern comparison would be a World War One soldier using a iPhone. Again, absolutely ridiculous. And it's it's not hard to get these things right. If you ask a decent reenactor, if you ask somebody who's got a... Even if you Google it, what type of helmets were Romans wearing in 44 BC... It it comes up. It's it's not it's not difficult. Why what these researchers? Why can't they just do basic basic research? 
the return of the soft leather bracer come on guys this is complete fantasy now it's it's ridiculous i think i've said that about a million times that it's ridiculous romans never wore these soft leather bracer things it would have looked a million times but oh no it wouldn't actually um just take them off just take them off and that belt as well it's it's not suitable at all in fact the whole thing that leather armor the leather belt the cape thing no just no just stop it this is not a documentary in the slightest this man is supposed to be julius caesar if anyone finds a picture of julius caesar dressed like this i shall eat my hat Moving on to Cleopatra herself, and I'm going to start with the armband that she's wearing. It's clear that it is based on archaeological evidence. Um, it's based on this snake armband here, and it is it's a reasonable attempt, but it's in real life it's far more delicate. Uh, her clothes that she's wearing, she's she's Greek. She isn't in any of the scenes. She isn't wearing anything that remotely resembles any of the Greek fashions of the time in the images and the coins that she is portrayed in. Um, she is portrayed wearing Greek clothing and the designers, the costume designers, have decided to put her in these sort of modern two-piece, these modern fabrics these modern they really really stand out as being completely made up completely fantasy instead whoever is in charge of her hair as well she clearly wears her hair in all the images the portraits of her as a a greek lady she has it she has it back she has a diadem on um she has a, and a low bun at the back and this is the style that in multiple different media she is shown wearing her hairstyle. For some reason, she never has an entourage with her. Lastly, Alexandra itself, where this mostly takes place. It's portrayed as this small, desolate, run-down city where it would have been a really bustling, busy town big big city it had a population of about half a million which is a really really big population for the time period it had a big lighthouse there it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world it had big palaces big buildings and none of this is portrayed in the documentary it just seems to be really sort of almost abandoned Although, for some reason, they seem to show, again, lots of pyramids around and the nearest sort of pyramid or great pyramid nearest to Alexandria is about 200 kilometres away. Again, none of it at all makes any sense whatsoever in the slightest. And that's all from me today. If you've liked this video, please like, comment, share and most importantly, please, please subscribe. Um, but... Thank you ever so much for joining me and goodbye for now.